Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, the topic for tonight is something that is crucial. It underpins something that we've been talking about on this channel for nine months now. It's not over until we decide that it's over. Every single fight for our rights that are written into the Bill of Rights in our Constitution, it's ours. The second that it's over is when we decide that we give up. It is never over until that point, and this is an exact perfect case for us to look at. In fact, it's coming back to one of the people who are really influential in the past 20, 30 years around our gun rights, Dick Heller. Okay, This is an article that I pulled out from the Washington Post, and Heller is at it again, but check out what he's doing because this is a good example of never give up. They are against the wall when they try to take our gun rights. They always have been and they always will be because they're having to fight with a bill of rights, a constitution. So let's be really careful how they word things, and that's their Achilles heel. We're going to dive into this, but I want to hear what you guys think. And from me to you, don't you give up ever. Our gun rights are going to be passed on to the next generation, and this is crucial. Let's dive in. I want to hear what you guys think, and it's linked in the description box below, as always. All right. DC's ghost gun law faces legal challenge from Dick Heller, successful gun rights activist. Heller, winner of landmark, landmark Supreme Court gun rights case, takes on city's attempt to ban untraceable guns. Now, here's where it kind of bleeds over. Does this sound familiar? Like the new rules, the ATF, when they redefine re um, re receivers? Does it sound familiar? This is lining into that. Don't ever give up. We have more power than we think we do. All right. In response to the rising number of untraceable ghost guns, boo, on the streets of Washington, D.C., the council last year passed a law banning the weapons. Okay, we've covered that ad nauseum. But listen to where they made the mistake. But a new lawsuit argues that the city's law is overly broad and outlaws, outlaws all polymer-based handguns, including the top-selling handguns made by Glock. Okay, so they overrode it. They did it wrong, and so they're catching more Second Amendment guaranteed rights on accident. The net is too broad. Translate this out to what we covered in April when the new ATF rules came in, when they did receiver changes. It was all about ghost guns and requiring serial numbers on things that weren't guns but could be guns. And I said on this channel, it's too broad. This is exactly what we're talking about. Heller is doing it in D.C., and if you think this is not going to go to the federal ATF level, you got another thing coming because this, this is important. The city has a poor track record in its attempts to restrict guns in the city, with its prohibition on gun ownership overturned by the landmark Supreme Court decision in District of Columbia v. Heller. Now a plaintiff in that suit, Dick A. Heller of Southeast Washington, is back with a challenge to the new ghost gun law, as well as the district's long ban on manufacturing weapons. Now this is important because this guy does his, his due diligence. He's got a winning track record on a bunch of things, but it's really crucial. Here's just a short list. Heller declined to be interviewed, Lyon said, but he and other gun right activists have won a series of victories over the district in the courts in recent years because the court, excuse me, the D.C. goes too far on their gun control. The rulings have overturned a ban on weapons with a capacity of 12 or, or more rounds, a ban on carrying a weapon outside the home, <laughs> soon to be overturned in New York, by the way, a ban on possession of ammunition without gun registration, and a ban on non-residents possessing a gun in the city. Last month, a federal judge ordered the district to pay damages to six people who were arrested under gun laws that were later found unconstitutional. We covered that on this channel. Do you see how all of these things are interlinked? They are interlaced together. Our freedom is not just one ruling, one law. It's a long system of checks and balances, which is why we're always fighting. Amendment protected conduct, but merely regulates it. David Pacino, senior staff attorney for the Giffords Law Center to Prevent Gun Violence, said that, quote, the right to make your own firearm at home, I can't find that in the Second Amendment, end quote. It's interesting, what can you find in there? The right to keep and bear arms? Ooh, I've never heard you say that before. They don't know how to stand when they're under scrutiny because they're so used to being right. It's important, but they're going to lead themselves down the wrong path here. Heller's lawsuit attacks the definition as unconstitutionally vague, what we talked about on this channel. The suit notes that the, that the district's concerns with ghost guns could easily be addressed by requiring unfinished frames or receivers to be registered and have serial numbers, and by requiring that transfers of unfinished frames or receivers be conducted by a licensed dealer accompanied by a background check. They are setting them up for more failure because gun registration, all of these things, infringe upon the rights. 
it's amazing what Heller's doing here, but more importantly, this is laying the groundwork to completely rule that this rule from ATF, rule it unconstitutional. Because if the courts side here and they dictate what's going on with this situation in DC, it is not long until the ATF's imaginary rule that they made up out of nowhere also falls prey to the exact same litigation. And that's what I've got for you guys tonight. Let me know what you think, and I will see you tomorrow, tomorrow on the bullet points. I'm Braden, signing out.